Hi, I'm Tanya Seabach. Hi. <laughs> so, hidden secrets. Throughout history, artists have been painting, and there's been paintings underneath them, and recently we've been discovering them. So, one of those. Pablo Picasso, actually, I would say he has the most of these paintings, and I think it's maybe he just ran out of canvas, or maybe he just didn't like what he did before. But what's interesting with the Blue Room, oops, the Blue Room, Okay, got it. Okay, go. got it. <laughs> um, so anyway, Picasso's Blue Room, when they x-rayed it, first of all, this painting was done in 1901, and when they x-rayed it in 2014, they found a man with a bow tie. So here's the painting, here's the man with the bow tie. <laughs> Science actually discovered this. <laughs> And then there's Van Gogh. Now, Van Gogh painted this painting. It's a patch of grass. That's the name of the painting. It's a painting of a patch of grass. And when they took high-intensity x-ray from a particle accelerator, exactly, they found this woman. And then here's um, uh, Da Vinci's mural. It had 20 layers of whitewash, and it's being restored now. So let's talk about the science. Conservators, restorationists have been using chemistry and x-ray spectroscopes, radioactive isotopes, believe it or not. Um, that's actually any paintings that were painted after 1945 actually have two isotopes attached to it, and that's how they're able to find frauds. Um, and then also high-intensity x-ray particles from accelerators. And here, in the periodic table, <laughs> you can see that the elements that have the highest atomic weight are the ones where the x-rays actually pick up the pigment the most. So at the bottom, PB is lead, and that has an atomic weight of 82. And so those are the ones that are the most pronounced. And anything with a lower atomic weight, they don't pick it up as well. So that leads to the big discovery that they made just last year, literally just last year. Last October, 2017, in Scotland, they made an amazing discovery. Here's Sir John Maitland. This painting was done 428 years ago, and it went to be restored, and actually it's inscribed, you can see on the top right, it says the date. And when they took an x-ray of it, they found a mysterious woman underneath it. 428 years later. And after carefully studying this, they found that it was Queen Mary of Scott. <laughs> I know. <laughs> but this is the most interesting part, is that there's a connection here. So you've got Queen Mary of Scott behind Sir John Leighton. Okay. This painting was done in 1589 and Mary was killed in 1587. So somebody scrambled to cover her up two years later. And this brings the big mystery of the unknown. Why are there so little paintings of Queen Mary of Scots? And there she is. So one of the things that they figured out, at first they were like, who is this woman? Is it Queen Elizabeth I? Who is it? But they could tell it was her based on the nose because she has that very distinct Scottish royalty nose that Princess Diana also inherited. It's kind of that long nose that they all seem to have in common. And why are there so many, let me, so little portraits of uh, Queen Mary? So I'm going to tell you about her life if you don't know it already. She was born in 1542, and she Six days after she was born, her father died. He was King James V, and she became the Queen of Scotland as a six day, as a, she was six days old. So they shipped her off to France to get educated by the courts, and they had a regent handle the rest of the, uh, 
being a royal family. <laughs> so here's the big thing. Who was going to marry Mary of Scott? That was like a big thing. She was a beautiful woman. So at 17 years old, she marries Francis II when he was only 15 years old. So he's 15, she's 17. And um, one year later, he becomes the king. One year after that, he dies. She's grief-stricken, and she has to go leave France that she loved and has to go back to Scotland. <laughs> that's right, ships, that's right. <laughs> and she comes back to Scotland and meets Henry Stuart, who's a lord, and she gets married to him because she, she, you know, she couldn't be uh, single. And this man was a handsome and charming, but little did she know he was a horrible person. She gets pregnant. He's horrible to her. And he eventually accuses her of having an affair on him with the musician. And Henry comes in and stabs the musician 56 times in front of her while she's pregnant with their son. So she has the baby. And here's a little, like, this is actually not an original painting. This came way later in the 1700s. But these slides are just showing you what other artists did. And she, okay, so one year later, all of a sudden, Henry blows up out of the blue. Yep, he blows up. <laughs> so, of course, they accuse her. And they accuse this other man named James, who supposedly helped her. Well, James is acquitted, and when he's acquitted, he comes back to her, and he's like, oh, they let me off, and uh, hey, why don't you come back with me? And she's like, hmm, no. And he's like, yes, come back with me. With 800 of his army men, he rapes her. Because back in those days, it was common practice to rape a woman, because once she was with him, then she was dishonored and had no choice but to be his bride. So that means he becomes the king. So they get married, super controversial. It created a huge disaster. And poor Mary had to flee. She, was, she left Scotland. Actually, here's a... And she had to give up her throne to her infant son. Never saw her son again. And she flees to Queen Elizabeth, her cousin, who lives in England. And she's so controversial because not only is she a Catholic, but they're intimidated by her being a queen, and there's, she comes with a total disaster and ton of drama, that the queen makes her a prisoner. 18 years, she gets locked up in the castle. This is actually the castle. And then Mary plots to kill the queen, and they put her on trial, and they behead her. And sadly, it took three tries to get her head off. And when the executioner finished, he raised her head and said, God save Queen Elizabeth. So why are there so little, there's not that many paintings of Queen Mary, but while she was in prison, she had a few small little paintings that she tried to get other artists to do of her. And so there's these little ones that exist, and actually all the replicas that we have later are based on these of what she looked like. So here's what's really interesting. The artist that painted the painting of Sir Maitland is, became the main artist for her son, the son that belonged to the, the second husband that was awful. So... It's kind of interesting that he commissioned his mother to be covered up. And um, yeah, all of these uh, mysteries are finally getting discovered because of science. So why don't we review the different technologies that art has, you know, all these different like sciences. So we have x-rays, we have a spectroscope, we have radioactive isotopes. Oh, let's not forget chemistry. We have high intensity x-rays and particle accelerators. And we also have x-ray vision. We do. There is a conservator, restorationist out there that exists that has x-ray vision. And her name is Cecilia Jimenez. 
and she's an X-Men. <laughs> and she was the artist that restored the EC Homo. <laughs> yep, exactly. Science, X-Men, yeah. And created and found the potato Christ underneath. Before that, we had no idea that the potato Christ existed until Jimenez had that x-ray vision and was able to see that potato Christ underneath. It's true. I'm t everything I'm telling you is true. In fact, we've been able to discover other potato Christs underneath other paintings because of x-ray vision. So why don't we raise a toast to poor Mary of Scott. She had a tragic death, tragic life, lots of loss. She was dishonored and shamed, so why don't we honor her tonight? 428 years later, and one year because we're here telling you the story, let's honor her. Cheers. Cheers.